welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to talk about today uh, are the figures that I've acquired through various Kickstarter campaigns. Uh, and the reason that I want to talk about this now is because that there's a Kickstarter uh, currently uh, being funded, and uh, I'm hoping I can maybe convince some of you guys to support it because I think it's a really cool uh, assortment of figures, and I'd really like to see it go as as far as it can on this Kickstarter campaign. So uh, if you've watched uh, my previous episodes, um, I did a whole uh, a whole episode on this line already. It's called Action Force, and it's created by a gentleman named Bobby Valla, who has started his own toy company called Vallaverse, and this is his initial line. And uh, he was kind enough to, to come on this little show of mine and uh, and discuss it. And that was about two weeks prior to the launch of the Kickstarter. So uh, he was just about getting ready to kick it off, and he was excited for us to see um, what was going to be revealed, because when I spoke to him last, um, we still only saw a handful of figures. We maybe had seen about 16, or sorry, about six or so of the figures, and there are now, uh, now that the campaign is launched, we know all the figures that are available, and there's 16 different figures available. Um, also at the time when I spoke to him, he had just started getting some pieces back from the factory so he could see what the actual sculpting looked like because prior to that he only had like concept art to show us so uh, now he's got some fully painted like mock-ups um, of some of the figures so yeah I just wanted to give you guys an update in case you were interested maybe you saw that last episode and yeah just in case my show is your only source for for toy news I thought I should uh, keep you up to date on what's happening with the Kickstarter so he did launch it on uh, June 14th, and I'm filming this on June 24th. Uh, I'm not sure when I'll get it posted. But at this point in time, we are 10 days into his 30-day campaign. And uh, so we've got 20 days left to meet his funding goals. And I really want to see us get there and surpass it. So if you've never backed a Kickstarter campaign, um, I want to explain the process to you a little bit. So... With any Kickstarter, whether it be action figures or, or whatever, um, somebody's got an idea, they figured out how much it's going to cost them to make, they say, I need people to donate, you know, if this thing costs 30 bucks, I need everybody to donate 30 bucks, and I need to at least hit $100,000, otherwise it's not feasible for me to send this off to the factory and make it. It just doesn't make enough sense if only 20 people send them 30 bucks. So they have to send, hit a minimum. And uh, if they surpass that minimum, then sometimes they do add-on items. That's the way it's worked with all the action figure Kickstarters. So um, Bobby has set an initial goal of $170,000, which I don't know, might sound high, but uh, it, it shouldn't sound that high because I'm going to walk you through um, some of the other Kickstarters I've backed, and I'll tell you kind of the, where they started and where they ended up. So, um, yeah, he, as of 10 days in, he is currently funded up to $42,714. It's probably gone up a little bit since I even looked at it last. As Every time somebody uh, backs the campaign, you know, it creeps up a little by little by little. And you can back this campaign kind of as little or as much as you want. The lowest campaign, like you can just donate five bucks to, to Bobby if you want. Um, I don't know why you necessarily do that. If you only got five bucks, by all means, throw them a bone. But uh, I think the lowest amount that you can pledge to get a figure uh, is about uh, 35 bucks for one of Bobby Ballas' figures. So you can just pledge 35 bucks and you'll get one figure. If you want two figures, you pledge 70 bucks. Um, there's a deluxe figure that costs 40 bucks. Um, there's some two packs of figures. There's some weapons packs. So you kind of choose what you want. Uh, you set that pledge and you add it to him and it will show his funding going up to see if he reaches that goal Now if by chance he doesn't reach that goal You're not charged anything and the project kind of fizzles out. Maybe he'll attack, you know, tackle it a different way Maybe try another Kickstarter uh, after, you know, he Fudges it around a little bit, maybe changes some things up, fewer figures Or maybe he'll just try and fund it himself and eventually sell these things on the website But yeah, let's hope that not something we have to think about. Let's hope it gets funded so, uh, yeah, so if he gets to the 170000 there are five figures available to us. Um, if he gets beyond that, 
Um, there's certain stretch goals that are unlocked as we hit certain increments. I think the first one is when we hit 190,000. So um, just to remind you of the figures that are available and to show you the new figures um, that even I hadn't seen yet when I, when I posted my last video on this topic, um, let's just quickly go through all of all of that stuff. So yeah, here we go. So here is just uh, some concept art to show you um, the Action Force logo, essentially. Here's the first figure that's available. This is the concept art, the digital mock-up of Condor. And now this is the physical figure that Bobby has from the factory, and then he's got it all painted up, and you can see it looks great. This is Karak. He's the leader of the bad guys, known as the Garrison. This is the digital mock-up. And this here is the physical mock-up, all painted up. He's got his helmet on. You can see how great it fits, his various weapons, alternate hands. Here's the digital mock-up of the Swarm Trooper. And here is the physical mock-up all painted. Now Bobby has said that those eyes will be translucent yellow on the final product. Here's the digital mock-up of Downrange. He doesn't have a painted version of him yet, but you can see here uh, the physical one. You can see how he can hold that pistol with both hands. The articulation looks great. Now the next figure was kind of a secret reveal. Bobby had kind of teased it. He didn't show it when he first launched the Kickstarter campaign on the 14th. He waited a couple of days. And uh, if you saw my interview with Bobby, he talked about his favorite G.I. Joe character was the Steel Brigade Trooper, which was kind of the generic trooper. He was a mail away. You could send in your name into Hasbro and you would get this figure here. This is the vintage Steel Brigade figure from Hasbro, which was a, you know, an official G.I. Joe figure. Uh, he was the modern version of the Steel Brigade. Anyway, like Action Force, Bobby was able, able to lift the trademark of uh, the Steel Brigade. So he's launching his own version of the Steel Brigade Trooper. There you saw the digital mock-up. Here's a close-up shot of that physical sculpt of the head and the accessories. And here is a final painted uh, physical version of the Steel Brigade, which is awesome. Now this here is Bone Collector. This is the first uh, stretch goal. So he's not initially available, neither is Eclipse here. And you'll notice with these ne next bunch of figures, there is no physical mock-up. Same with Trigger here. These are just the concept art. Then there's the a Swarm Trooper version 2. So this is kind of a bulkier, heavier version of a Swarm Trooper. And then there's an accessory pack, which is this kind of a backpack with translucent yellow wings. Then we've got Pandora, who's another stretch goal. Then we have a Garrison Trooper 2 pack. So you see you've got two different races there, a white guy and a black guy, and they've got those medieval helmets. And then you've got High Point, another Action Force soldier. Then we have another version of Eclipse in a different outfit. And then we have another two-pack. So this is the same two Swarm Troopers we had, except they're in darker colors. So you could consider them a Night Force Swarm Trooper, I guess. Then there's a couple weapons packs. Here's the first gun pack you open up. Here's the ultimate gun pack, which is a later stretch goal. Um, there's also some backpack accessories, which can get unlocked along the way. Bobby's also clarified on the campaign just how big these figures are going to be. So that mock-up there is a little bigger than the actual size, but he's pretty close to Marvel Legends and Star Wars Black Series. And here is the packaging concept. Okay, so that was a rundown of Bobby's Action Force Kickstarter. I hope uh, that all made sense. I kind of was racing through it kind of quickly. But... Um, so those first five figures, right up to the Steel Brigade Trooper, those are the ones that are available now. So if you want to just back one, one figure, you can, you know, pledge thirty-five bucks and you'll get one of those five figures. Forty for the Steel Brigade because he's a deluxe figure. And uh, like I mentioned there, the Steel Brigade Trooper, uh, when he was a GI Joe back in the eighties, you sent in your name and you got to pick what military specialty your guy would have and what weapons you came with and stuff. So, and they would send you a custom file card with your name on it, which was, you know, pretty great when you were a kid. Anyway, Bobby's doing the same thing with his Steel Brigade. Um, that's probably partly why he's a deluxe figure and costs five bucks more, because you're going to get that custom file card with your name on it if you choose that figure. So, yeah, those are the five figures you get, and hopefully we get to the $170,000. And if we surpass the hundred and seventy, dollars then that unlocks Bone Collector first, uh, and then Eclipse, and so on and so forth, and we'll get all those figures. And uh, I think, think there's some really great ones there. I hope we get them all um, because, yeah, I love this line. I plan on buying at least one of everything. I will probably buy multiples of the various troopers, the Steel Brigades, the Swarm Troopers. And if you like that Steel Brigade, 
Uh, he said that's a Kickstarter exclusive. So generally with how these things work is if he funds it, um, everybody on the Kickstarter will get those figures. Now it does take a while, sometimes a year or so or close to. So if he hits $170,000, then you will then be charged the amount that you pledged. And then you have to wait a year or so for the turnaround at the factory and all that stuff. Cause it takes a while to iron out all the kinks. Um, but in my experience, it's always been worth the wait. But uh, yeah, I'm really hoping that we get all those figures. So I'd really like to have all 16 um, plus a couple extra troopers. And yeah, so with uh, the Steel Brigade, it's a Kickstarter exclusive. So it's only available through this Kickstarter. All the other figures um, are probably going to be available for sale on either Bobby's website or on different online toy stores like Big Bad Toy Store. So even if you don't support it initially, you can probably buy most of these other figures later, assuming the project is funded, except you might pay a bit more. So where now the figures are costing 35 bucks, they might cost 45 to 50 bucks each when you're buying them from Big Bad Toy Store. So I wouldn't sit on the fence on this if you're interested, because for one, it might not even get funded and then they might never be made. So you want to support it and you want to get them at the cheapest price that you'll probably ever get these things. And yeah, let's try and get all those 16 figures unlocked. So if you're still... Uh, you know, not sure if you should do this, if you're a little nervous, you've ne maybe never backed a Kickstarter, you're wondering about what are the quality of these things going to be like. Um, I want to talk about a little, my uh, my past Kickstarter experiences. I've backed a few um, different Kickstarters and my experiences have always been great. So yeah, let's talk about the first one I backed. So I've been collecting G.I. Joes um, from Hasbro consistently. Uh, ever since they kind of revived the brand back in 2002, right up until present. And when I was buying those figures in the like, early to mid 2000s, I was aware of this website called Marauder Gunrunners. And what they did is they made uh, highly detailed little weapons for G.I. Joes, as well as um, some really neat accessories like folding chairs and bunk beds and uh, I don't know, barbed wire fences, just all kinds of stuff. And that was great for people that like to build dioramas uh, because most G.I. Joe figures from Hasbro didn't come with any of these little accessories that you'd want to populate uh, you know, a world. Or if you were taking toy photography, really they only came with a gun and a knife and it was hard to create a world that way. So Marauder Gun, Runner, gun Runners was great for um, giving you um, these extra accessories as well as some really nice uh, weapons. Um, I'm not a gun guy. Uh, I'm Canadian. I grew up in the city. I, I don't know. Guns aren't really my thing. So I didn't really care if my G.I. Joe's gun wasn't photo accurate or if it was purple instead of black or, you know, or if it, a rifle that was supposed to have a wood stock or whatever was all black when really it should have been maybe black with brown on it. Like that stuff didn't matter to me, but uh, I know it definitely matters to some Joe fans. And if it did, Marauder Gunrunners was the website to go to because they made really cool weapons. So they were doing that for a long time. And then in April 2014, it was on in, uh, April 1st, Marauder decided to launch their first action figure line. So they were really kind of stepping out of their, their wheelhouse. As far as I know, they didn't really have any experience in the action figure field. Um, I think they had hired... Um, these guys that were um, known as Boss Fight Studios, which was a toy sculpting studio that had worked on some of the G.I. Joes and stuff for, for Hasbro. So they had hired these sculptors to work with them to create these uh, customizable uh, three and three quarter inch army figures that would be compatible with your G.I. Joes. Um, and there was a big demand for this because Hasbro had kind of stopped supporting the G.I. Joe line after the second movie kind of came and went. There really wasn't any product coming out. And... Again, I'm not a customizer guy. I pretty much take what Hasbro gives me and I put it on the shelf. But I know a lot of people, they end up swapping parts, buying extra weapons, um, you know, painting them. And uh, this line here, so Marauder Task Force was the name of the figures. They were fully customizable uh, and like way beyond anything we'd seen from, uh, from G.I. Joe. Like they were super easy to swap out the parts and you could swap out everything. Like they, you could swap out you know, pop the arms off, pop the legs off, pop the heads off. There was all kinds of various heads. There was masks and gas masks and, you know, unmasked faces. Um, there was a ton of different weapons, 
tons of different web gear from like vests to just straps and there was little peg holes uh, all over the figure so you could uh, you could put a like a knife sheath on the side of the arm or a knife sheath on the boot or you could put a radio up here and uh, you could put all kinds of pouches and pockets and ammo and you could snap them all together however you wanted and uh, yeah it was it was really cool looking and it got a lot of people excited and uh, yeah I was really excited about it too because they, they looked great so back in April 1st 2014 Marauder Task Force had said we need to hit a minimum goal of thirty thousand dollars and I, I can't recall how long it took them to to fund that project but they definitely did it and they blew it out of the water they ended up with 244 155 dollars so like a quarter of a million dollars almost and uh there was um let's see 1195 different people that backed this project uh, so some people probably just backed for one figure and one figure cost 19 bucks but there was a lot of people that bought, you know, multiple figures. And unlike Bobby's line, which is mostly, you know, unique characters, you probably don't necessarily need to buy, you know, 10 different versions of Eclipse because she's a unique character. Whereas there was no unique characters in uh, Marauder's line. They were all just generic and you could buy the same figure and put 10 different heads on it. So there was really no limit. And people, some people went crazy buying these things and probably bought hundreds of them. Um, I did the all-in, which pretty much all these Kickstarters have, which you pay kind of a big lump sum of money, and it guarantees you one of everything that um, that comes out. Now, uh, I find it's a bit of a gamble to do that right off the bat. Like, there's definitely a lot of people that are back to Bobby's Kickstarter with the all-in, which will mean they get 16 figures. But that's assuming everything gets unlocked. Um, the Kickstarter explains on the website that if... You back it with the all-in, which costs, uh, I think, 570 bucks or something. But we only hit the bare minimum. So if the project gets funded at the $170,000, you'll have to pick 16 characters of the five that are available. So you're going to end up with like four or five versions of each different character. Which hmm. So it's a bit of a risk until you know the thing is at least funded and some of the, some of the uh, stretch goals are getting unlocked. And you feel confident like, yeah, I'll... I'll put in my 570 bucks. That'll give this project a big boost and it will help to unlock the next stretch goal. So yeah, I, I haven't gone all in on Bobby's yet because it's still kind of early for that. I want to see if everything gets unlocked. I don't necessarily want to commit to 16 figures when there's only going to be five different ones available. But yeah, wasn't a problem with Marauder Task Force. They had multiple colors. And uh, so with the all in, I got one of each color that they unlocked. So um uh, let me just quickly show you some of the Task Force figures. So these here are the various figures that I've gotten from Marauder Task Force. Now, um, not every single one of these color variations were available in that first 2014 Kickstarter. Um, like this orange one here, for example, I think that came later. But uh, I'm just going to show you all of my uh, male Marauder Task Force figures. So you'll see like that guy there, I've gotten the blue and the red. He's kind of my version of a Cobra Trooper. This guy here in the blue camo, he's kind of my version of Shockwave. So you can recreate G.I. Joe's. Sometimes the one Hasbro gave you, maybe you didn't meet your expectations. Um, or you can create brand new characters. You can see here with mine, most of the guys I made all have uh, masks on because uh, I want them to all be kind of unique trooper type characters. There only were a couple of different unmasked head available. Like there you see a bearded one. Um, this here, this hat is removable. And this is a really well made hat here. It's like a rubbery, soft rubber hat. So this dude here, so that's one of the other different heads. Most of the heads are available in different nationalities. So you can get them either in like tan skin or brown skin. And so there you go. You can wear the hat forwards if you want. But you'll see here with this gear, every one of these pouches, like this guy is all orange, um, but all four of those pouches on the front of them, I plugged in myself. These ones on his arm, these ones on his boots, the knife there that remo that's removable and I plugged the sheath in there. He's probably still got, yeah, some extra holes. There's three holes on the back of the vest, two more on the top of the back of the vest. So I could keep plugging things in, 
And I don't know, maybe I'm just not very original. I don't have much imagination. But you'll see my guys are all pretty consistent with solid colors. That's my gray guy, my orange guy, you know, my green guy, whatever, etc. Whereas you can really go, you know, nuts with these things and do it however you want. Even this little plug here on the top of the helmet uh, is removable. And you can put, um, like some of them have goggles that you can flip down, like night vision. There's just a ton of cool stuff. The goggles that you see a couple of these guys wearing, you can get them with various color lenses. So these are all clear goggles that you see here. But I do have some like red and green lens goggles. And yeah, they're just all really cool. I love these figures. And if you're a customizer, you'd really like these figures too. And so yeah, head on over to uh, Marauder Gunrunner's web website and uh, yeah, pick some of these guys up. Now I'm gonna show you my attempts at a couple of unique characters. This here was my attempt at making a General Ray, which is a character you might not be all that familiar with, but when Devil's Do was making G.I. Joe comic books, they had a new general kind of take lead of the G.I. Joe team. And he was a character I really didn't like at first, but really grew to like him. And so yeah, they, he never got a figure, so I tried to create him there. This here is Doc, the G.I. Joe medic, and I was not really happy with this figure. The head was too small. Um, so yeah, I tried to make my own version of Doc. I don't think I was all that successful. I definitely think some other people have probably made better versions of him. But you can see using the kind of the brown base figure and some tan accessories that I added to him, as well as these removable green goggles. They're the closest I could come to Doc's like, green lensed glasses. And then I just added some red and white pouches to kind of give him that look of maybe being a medic. So yeah, didn't work out great, but it's just fun to be able to try. And then these here, these are the Neo Vipers from the early 2000s G.I. Joe. And this era of G.I. Joe doesn't get much love at all, but I really like these Neo Vipers. And we don't have any versions of them in the modern era. So I tried to create them myself. So you'll see there I was maybe moderately successful using the gas mask head with uh, the certain kind of armored helmet. As well as I couldn't create the Cobra logo, but just giving them the, the red pouches on the front kind of worked to recreate that. Yeah, the armor on the legs and everything, I think they came out okay. And then I also created just an orange version of these guys just because I kind of like the way they looked. So yeah, you can do pretty much whatever you want with these things and I highly recommend them. The quality is great, so don't be worried about that. So the first Marauder uh, Task Force campaign was very successful, probably well beyond what they expected. Um, so they uh, launched another one the following year. They did another campaign which featured all uh, all female action figures. A lot of them wearing matching camo colors to the male counterparts from the previous Kickstarter. So they were called the uh, Valkyries. And they also uh, added some new um, color variations for the males along the way too. And I also went all in on this project, which means I got every different color variation uh, for all the females as well as the new male variations. And again, uh, very, very pleased with these figures. Um, let me just quickly show you a few of those. All right, so these here are some of my Valkyrie figures. So you can see here, again, there's a whole bunch of color variations um, as far as hair goes. Like you get redhead, you get your white hair, blonde. Um, there's different nationalities here. You see, it looks like I have like a uh, Hispanic snowtrooper there and then African-American. So lots of, lots of different color varieties. Um, there's my version of a female Cobra Trooper. Uh, and yeah, they were just a lot of fun to customize. Um, new pieces were introduced. You'll notice I have a couple of these ladies wearing scarves around their neck. Uh, I think that was a new piece that was introduced um, during the Valkyries line. So yeah, again, a lot of great figures. Very happy with these. And they are still available, so head on over to Marauder Task Force website and you can custom build your own Valkyrie figure. So the next campaign um, that Marauder launched was in 2017. And this was a smaller campaign, but they were focusing on some specific things. They had um, canines, dogs, because, you know, G.I. Joes have come with animals um, from pretty much the very beginning. But the animals are usually just a solid hunk of plastic. They don't really move. And so Marauder really wanted to give quality 
dog action figures with all kinds of points of articulation. I can't remember how many points of articulation they ended up with, but it's a lot, way more than anything we saw before on a G.I. Joe dog. So they gave us dogs, then they gave us exosuits, which are, you know, these big, crazy mechanical suits that a figure, like a pre-existing figure straps into. Um, kind of like, I'm trying to think what, like that Matt Damon movie, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, so the exosuits aren't really my thing. I didn't actually buy any of them. Um, and then the other thing was a contract ops, which kind of was like a, I don't know, CIA looking guy in a t-shirt and ball cap, uh, khaki pants or whatever. So these were the three things that they wanted to launch. I did not go all in on this because I wasn't that interested in the exosuits, but I did get one example of the dog, always with the intention of getting more. I haven't yet, but uh, I just kind of wanted to see what the dog was all about. And then I did get a couple of the, uh, the contract ops and the, uh, the full suited figures. So uh, let's take a look at some of those right now. So here you'll see I have a male and a female in a full suit. So these were brand new as part of this campaign. And these are known as the agency ops. Every different uh, paint deco had a different name for a different type of op. Um, this is the contract op guy that I mentioned earlier, who's kind of like a CIA guy. And I'll, again, these guys, I just have them wearing those, uh, those rubber hats. So those are removable. And I think these are the first, this Kickstarter gave us these heads with the sunglasses uh, sculpted right on. So those came out pretty good. And the female, the bun on her hair is even removable. You can swap out the bun for like a ponytail. So like that's pretty extreme customizing. So there's contract ops guy. Now this is the kind of animal that we usually get with GI Joes. This is Snake Eyes' Wolf Timber. And you'll see here, he's just a solid hunk of plastic. He's got a little bit of paint on his face. That's it. Now these are the dogs that we got as part of this Kickstarter. Now you'll see here, he's accessorized with a vest. He doesn't have to be wearing that. You can strap on different pouches. He's got different holes on his uh, harness, just like uh, the other figures. So I've added this kind of like handlebar thing to the top. I've added this pouch and I added that bone, another pouch here. I've got him wearing goggles, which you can actually slip on over his eyes. Um, his head, uh, you can actually change out his head and uh, he's got a different like angrier face, like a scowling face. His mouth is articulated, so you can open his mouth. Um, you can see here on his legs, like he's articulated multiple spots. You can pretty much do the, stretch his legs right out, kind of get him to stand up. I'm gonna start losing pieces here. That is one problem I have with the Mar Marauder Task Force figures is they're pretty finicky. If you're going to play with them, all these little pouches and stuff start falling off pretty quick. But even they suggest once you have a configuration you're happy with that you actually use crazy glue to, to finalize it, which I haven't done yet on any of mine. But uh, yeah, you'll see this dog here is pretty great. Far better than anything we've ever gotten from Hasbro. So yeah, these figures are also available on uh, Marauder's website. So go track them down. And then in 2018, uh, Marauder Task Force launched a fourth Kickstarter, and this is up to date, their, their most recent one. And this was a World War II styled um, Marauder Task Force. So it's a different nations. You got Japanese soldiers, German soldiers, American soldiers. And uh, yeah, they're all wearing, dressed in uh, like World War II uh, authentic outfits. And uh, they looked great. And uh, so that still hasn't, um, the campaign is long over, but the figures haven't shipped out. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, remains to be seen. Now this is the first one that I didn't back at all for Mar Marauder, um, just because even though the figures looked great, uh, I kind of like integrating the Marauder Task Force figures into my G.I. Joes and the World War II guys just didn't really fit in with what I was collecting. Um, once they are available on Marauder's website, I'll probably buy a couple, but, uh, yeah, I didn't feel the need to back the campaign. They obviously haven't needed, um, my help as uh, the Valkyries campaign, the initial goal was 34,000. They ended up hitting 190,000. The, uh, the canine exosuit campaign, the goal was 64,000 and they ended up with 217,000. And then the world war two, um, the, the goal was 64,000 and they hit 263,000. So they surpassed their goal by 200,000, even without my help. So yeah, they've been doing great. And, uh, yeah, so I don't have any figures from that, the World War II line to show you. So let's move on to uh, the next uh, Kickstarter that I funded. 
So shortly after Marauder launched their first Kickstarter back in April 2014, the guys that helped them with the sculpting on that Boss Fight Studio, they launched their very own original toy line through a Kickstarter, and it was called Vitruvian Hacks. And Hacks stood for Highly Articulated Character Kit System. And they launched that in, on June 2nd, 2014. Um, their goal was 75000 which they met by June 5th, so just a couple of days. And they ended up um, getting $412,270. So that's crazy. They got a ton of uh, supporters on that. And I was all in on this project. I loved this project. This um, was all like Greek mythology. And so it's nothing that anybody else had really ever tackled before. Not since the uh, the Clash of the Titan figures from like, I don't know, 1982, which I had as a kid and I really liked. And I loved that movie as a kid. So I've always been a fan of Medusa and the Kraken and Perseus and all that mythology stuff. And these figures were such high quality. They were so nice. I was super excited about the line. So yeah, I went all in on that. And I ended up with 23 unique figures. Plus they, they provided these just blank solid colored figures that were perfect for customizing. I ended up with 16 of those. And then they did little skeleton figures. I ended up with four different colors of the skeletons. And yeah, overall, I was very excited about the line. Now, Boss Fight has continued uh, this line, Vitruvian Hacks. So they did multiple waves of these Greek mythology figures. And then that's what they call Series 1. And now they've moved on to Series 2, which is more like fantasy Lord of the Rings type stuff, which I don't have much interest in. Um, so I never backed that. And there's a, there's a reason why I don't have a whole lot of interest in, which I'll talk about uh, in a few minutes. But uh, yeah, let's show you some of the, uh, the Vitruvian Hacks Greek mythology figures. So I have a little display of my Vitruvian Hacks figures over on some floating shelves here. Um, and I was going to haul the figures over to my little spot where I film, but I, there's too many. I really didn't want to lug them over there. So I'll just show you my display. So you'll see there, there's the various skeletons, which have a ton of detail for three and three quarter inch figures. There you'll see... Um, one of Medusa's sisters. Here's another one of her sisters. Here's one of the Gorgons. And when you look at the, the sculpting on these snake bodies, like they're crazy. This thing is standing up on its own without any sort of display base, just based on the way I've got the tail coiled. So that there is pre-curse Medusa. So she still had snaky hair apparently before she was cursed. Um, but there's my main Medusa figure. Um, this one here, it's, you'll see another Medusa there, and she's kind of like translucent gray plastic with little shiny speckles in her. I don't know if that really comes across, but that's supposed to be Celestial Medusa. This dude here, this is like one of the stone warriors who's kind of been resurrected with lava coursing through him or something. Those guys are called the Underworld Warriors. Um, and yeah, you'll just see... A ton of really cool figures. These things were so great. So that's more my uh, like monstery bad guy shelf, I guess. And then up here, oh, there's another skeleton hanging out. These are, I guess, my hero shelf. So these are all like the Spartan warriors. So you see here, you got this guy, solid bronze, which looks great. One of these guys is Leonidas. Um, now this guy here, this is a guy that's been turned to stone from looking at Medusa. Uh, just great paintwork on these things. Uh, and some of these guys that you'll see, especially the guys in the background, uh, there's another Celestial guy. I think that's Celestial Perseus. Yeah, some of the ones you see in the back, those are just the solid blanks. So like, you'll see that orange and brown and red female back there. They don't have any painted detail. That's because they were just basically essentially just sold as customizable kits. And then I bought a bunch of extra armor, and some of them just make pretty good figures just on their own. This guy here, I've got translucent blue with red, so that's kind of my version of like Kristar. And yeah, just uh, the solid silver bodies there. You'll see I've got a female solid silver there, and there's a male with solid silver with more silver armor on. Yeah, you can just create some really cool stuff. Like this guy here with the dark brown skin and the white armor. Like there's no paint apps on him at all, but you know, he looks like he could be a great just standalone character on his own. So yeah, some really great stuff.
I highly recommend this line. And like I said, if Greek mythology isn't really your thing, you can uh, maybe support their fantasy line. And they're supposedly going to be doing uh, like robots and science fiction next. So I'll probably be back in on that one. So after the successful funding of the first line, the first series of uh, Vitruvian Hacks, they didn't bother with Kickstarters. They just kept selling figures, so they put out a new wave of figures. Um, they didn't necessarily need a whole lot of money for funding because it was mostly reused parts and repainted figures. So a lot of the tooling dollars had already been uh, funded. You know, so they didn't make need to make new pieces, which made it easier for them to produce. The next time that they launched a Kickstarter wasn't until uh, March 2018, where they launched uh, a line of horses to coincide with their figures. So these are horses scaled at three and three quarter inches. And uh, obviously that required a whole bunch of new sculpting. So their uh, initial funding amount was a little higher. So instead of 75,000 for the first one, this one, they had a goal of 125,000, which they, uh, they did achieve. They got to 197,000. So they got the initial assortment plus a couple of stretch goals. Now, uh, this one I didn't actually support either, even though I think the horses are great. Um, again, I think at the time I was maybe, my money was kind of elsewhere and I wasn't dying to have a horse, but I knew they'd be funded, which they did. And the figures will uh, be available for sale. Um, that, that one was just March 27, 2018, and the figures have not yet arrived. So uh, when they do, I'll definitely order some because the f a lot of the horse figures are kind of intended... I think more for the fantasy figures, which I didn't buy into, but they do have a add-on kit for the horses where you can add um, um, Pegasus wings to the horse. And so I feel my Greek mythology needs a Pegasus. So I'll definitely be getting a, a horse with uh, Pegasus wings when the time comes. On February 9th, 2015, um, the Four Horsemen launched their first, uh, actually, I don't know if it was their first Kickstarter. It was the Four Horsemen are uh, famous uh, toy sculptors. These guys have been around a long time. These were kind of the first uh, toy sculptors I was familiar with and knew like their names. Um, and they started working with Todd McFarlane on Spawn figures way back in the day. And those early Spawn figures were kind of the... the birth of the adult action figure collectible and uh, so yeah these guys did some really great sculpting and so people knew who they were they were fans of their work and as popular as they were on all the spawn figures they really became household names for us toy nerds anyway um when they started working on masters of the universe they did uh, all the 2002 masters of the universe figures and then they did the masters of the universe classics figures um and yeah, right up to present, they still work on these massive universe figures, and they're great. But they hadn't done um, an original line, so they started doing uh, a couple of lines. And again, I'm not sure if they started on Kickstarter or not. I didn't. If they did, I didn't fund their first couple. But they were doing some figures of uh, outer spacemen, and I think they had one called Gothopolis, if I remember correctly. But uh, the first Kickstarter that at least I'm aware of was their Mythic Legions, where they wanted to start a whole new world of fantasy along the lines of Lord of the Rings or uh, Warcraft or something. So the line was all ogres and elves, and they were six-inch scale, highly detailed figures. They looked really cool. They set a goal of 140000 was what they wanted to meet, and they ended up um, getting 452000 plus pledged. Um, and so, yeah, there was... 34 figures in total, and these things were great. Like, they're some of the nicest figures I have in my collection. Just the detail, the painting, the articulation, very awesome. And uh, before I jump into showing you some of them, I'll just tell you. So then, Mythic Legion, so it was successfully funded. Um, I think it took about a month or so for them to su successfully fund. But uh, they did, and they surpassed it a lot, unleashed all the kinds of stretch goals. Um, I did not go all in on this just because these were six inch figures. They were a little more, more expensive and the all in, I think would have cost like a thousand dollars us or something, which is probably like 13, uh, 
thirteen hundred Canadian or something, and it was just it was just too much. So I picked a couple of select figures, and then I did the same thing when they launched uh, Mythic Legions Wave Two in twenty seventeen. Again, they had an assortment of forty three figures, and uh, I just picked my favorite four, and backed that. And for their Legions Mythic Legions Two, they set a goal of one hundred forty thousand, and they got nine hundred thirty four thousand. So they almost hit a million dollars in that line. So when you see the kind of support these guys have, and that was only with uh, 1,800 backers. So only 1,800 people got them up to almost a million dollars, which is, is crazy. So when you see that Bobby Val is asking for 170 for his, and right now he's only at the 40,000 mark or so, and it seems like a long way to go, there's always seems a big rush with these things right near the end. Um, so yeah, I'm really hoping, and I am confident that we, that we should be able to get there. So um, yeah, let me just show you some of these uh, Mythic Legions figures because they are great. So here are my Mythic Legion figures. I only have a handful of them. Um, and like my Vitruvian hacks, I decided to just film my display rather than haul them into uh, my little recording area there just because they're in a whole other room. I've got them displayed in these uh, glass IKEA cabinets here. So, but yeah, you'll see I'm a big fan of the skeletons. And there's like some soft goods. This guy's got like a cloth cape. Uh, like just some, this guy here is kind of an homage to Skeletor, and he actually has an alternate head with a yellow skull, which is even closer to Skeletor. Now, this is my second case here. So you'll see here I've got a knight, and her helmet like flips down there and everything. She's got an alternate head without the helmet on at all. Uh, I don't know what this guy's deal is. He's kind of like a tree slash deer guy. So this guy here, his name is uh, Grisha the Slayer or something. I can't recall their names off the top of my head, but this guy here is an homage to He-Man. This crazy dude here, I don't really know what his deal is, but I just thought he looked cool. And then we got this big crazy troll. He was not part of the Kickstarter, um, but he came later. Um, they've done that a few times with Myth Mythic Legions. There have been two m big Kickstarter campaigns, uh, and then they've just sold the other ones as pre-orders. I have two other waves currently pre-ordered that I'm waiting on, and I did just get a new Mythic Legions the other day that I haven't even opened yet. So here's the latest Mythic Legions figures that I just got in the mail the other day, and I've been dying to open them up, but... I wanted to save it and open it up for uh, for you guys on one of these videos. So you'll see me open him up on the next video that I post. Um, but anyway, you can see here that he's clearly an homage to uh, Battle Cat. And yeah, he looks fantastic. And just if you want an idea of what these, the packaging on these things look like. See here, there's a kind of just a standard package that shows you some of the characters in the line. There's kind of a write-up of the story of this world they're building. And there's a unique bio for this character named Kauros on the side of the package. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. All right, so that is my rundown of uh, all the various Kickstarters that I've backed. So I'm sure there's probably some horror stories out there about uh, people that backed a Kickstarter and then it never saw the light of day and they lost their money and or they got something and it was far inferior to what they were told they were going to get. I'm sure that happens. But as long as you stick, stick to like reputable people, um, and I don't know Bobby personally, but you know he's worked at Hasbro. Uh, he's worked on action figures before. Uh, he worked on Marvel Legends. He worked on uh, Star Wars. Um, he's worked on Transformers. He's worked on G.I. Joe. He's worked on a bunch of stuff. So he has an idea of the timing, the pricing, uh, I, I feel confident that he knows what he's doing. So I have no worries about this not coming through and not coming through with the quality that I expect from these figures. Like I said, I haven't been disappointed with anything I've received through these Kickstarters thus far. So yeah, as long as you stick to good ones, like Action Force, I guarantee that you'll be pleased with the product. So if there's anything that I missed or any questions that you have, for one, you can go to you know the Action Force Kickstarter and he's got an ask you know you can ask him questions in there um he he's, he'll answer your questions on uh 
on Instagram or on his own website, wherever you can find him. But if you have any questions for me um, about either the Action Force Kickstarter or about any of the other previous Kickstarters, uh, I'm happy to talk about them with you. So leave some comments below and we'll continue the conversation. You can find me on Instagram as well at Mike's Collection Halifax. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope this has encouraged some people to go out and support uh, Bobby's project. And uh, yeah, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.